My name is Steven Bennett. I'm a shooting guard for the Butler Bulldogs on the walk -on. Stephen was born in Evansville, and his father was the assistant coach at the University of Evansville. So from the minute he was born, he was always at the basketball court. It's just been a part of his blood since the day he was born, really. I grew up with the game of basketball. The game of basketball means um, pretty much everything. I, I grew up with it, I was born into it. My dad's been a coach and uh, was always a coach through my childhood. Yeah, I played some other sports when I was younger, uh, but nothing really brought the thrill of basketball. Nothing brought the same excitement seeing the shot go in, hearing a swoosh. Um, being one of the best players out there and just competing with other guys around the state, not to mention just being in Indiana in general playing basketball. High school basketball in Indiana is unlike anything else probably in the world. I mean, it is, it is a way of life in Indiana. High school basketball in Indiana is basically like a religion of type. It's one of the things that everybody talks about all the way from November through March. It's an awesome experience to play here, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't go anywhere for any other sport uh, ever. 6-10 to go, Bennett to inbound. Should have been a foul, wasn't. Now Hahn looks, gets the ball to Bennett. Now he's open for a three. Yeah. Over to Bennett, he's open for another three, it's good! Into the lane, over to Bennett, another three, good again! Over to Bennett, he'll find the three and hit it! Steven Bennett is on fire! Steven, he grew uh, to about 6'3", so he was a big shooting guard, he's a great shooter great shooter. Uh, he could do everything. He could handle the ball. He could rebound. Uh, he could bring the ball up against the press. Uh, just did everything else. You know, great passer. Probably passing might have been one of his biggest strengths also, but he averaged a lot of points. He worked hard. Oh gosh, it might be 11 or 12 at night. He would leave here and go to the field house to shoot around, and he was always very, very dedicated. I fully expected uh, from the time I was like 10 or 11 to get a division one scholarship throughout high school. I worked for it. Uh, I worked for it harder than anybody else in my school. I worked for it harder than a lot of people in the entire state of Indiana. Uh, I didn't have the greatest athleticism. I didn't have a lot, a lot of things. But uh, it was my goal and I believed it. And um, all throughout my childhood, all throughout high school, I was 100% confident I was going to get it. And my junior year, I, I was getting that level. I was getting looks uh, from multiple schools. I had one offer from Miami, Ohio and I was getting looks from Davidson, Belmont, and different places. And uh, my injury took away all that. My injury happened about halfway through my junior year of high school. Uh, we were like 10 or 11 and two, and I was starting to play some of the best basketball I had in my entire life. I was playing at an elite level, and we were winning games. And uh, one, of the, one of the best seasons uh, as a team, and my best season individually, was going on. And I caught the ball in the fast break uh, against Huntington North, and uh, took a couple steps and planned to go for a layup and felt a huge pop. Uh, and it ended up, I went to the hospital that night and got an MRI and I tore my uh, ACL and medial meniscus. And so I went through that surgery in a week of rehab and um, I didn't really like asking for favors a lot while I was injured. So I was kind of stupid and I went to go get my own uh, calculator. And I ended up falling down a set of stairs and uh, bent my knee backwards that I got fixed and ripped my patellar tendon after that uh, because they used that to fix my ACL. So that really threw things for a turn and I, I got that second surgery and uh, the rehab that took me about a week to accomplish with an ACL took me four months and an extra surgery to accomplish with the patellar tendon tear uh, to be able to get that full range of motion back. And so it ended up being about nine months uh, of straight rehab Coming back from that, never complaining, working three hours a day, doing that, that when anybody, anybody might have given up and he didn't want to do it, I gave him permission to give up. I saw the pain and the struggles he went through and just coming back from that and then playing with reckless abandon uh, and going after it like he had never been hurt before, not worrying about whether he would get re-injured uh, and just having that mental toughness. I couldn't do some of the same things that I could before my injury. Uh, I wasn't as quick 
I'm not near. I'm not very athletic to begin with, so my athleticism after the injury wasn't very good at all. So I couldn't quite jump the same and get into guys the same, and get shots off the same. Even with my injury, I was the 12th leading scorer in school history. Um, I might have been like top 25 or 30 in rebounding. Uh, I won a conference championship and uh, was the leading scorer in that game my freshman year. I was in the North South All Star Game, the Hickory All Star Game. I was the National Comeback Player of the Year after my senior year. Before he got hurt, he did have Division One offers, but once he hurt his knee, um, obviously everybody kind of waited. He couldn't have the summer to where anybody could see him because he was hurt as far as playing AAU games and getting recruited. So in the end, he had some small school offers, uh, full ride offers, and uh, decided that Butler was the place he wanted to be. I told myself before I made my decision that if I was at that level again when I was healthy, then even with this injury, I can get back to that level. I can play at this level, I can play at the highest level and uh, compete and play well. And that's why I chose to become a walk-on. He's my sixth player that's came from Newcastle that I've coached that played Butler. And uh, every one of them have been a great success over there. And uh, he's just a Butler guy. There's nothing, you couldn't talk him out of it. And he, he always told me, he said, Dad, I'd rather fail trying to be a Butler basketball player than go somewhere else and play. Coming in as a walk-on, it's probably different than you know the normal college experience, um, especially versus a normal student and also somebody who's on scholarship. Um, you get a lot of the same benefits as a scholarship player. You know, you're on the team, you, know, you get all the gear, you get to practice with them. But then, you know, it comes down to you not getting school paid for. Um, you're putting in all this time you may never play. Uh, you know, you, you may, you know, like come out of school in debt where some of these kids may not. So it, it's definitely different um, just because you're not, not that you're not guaranteed anything because those other guys aren't guaranteed anything, but the opportunity that you may ever play or you may ever get on scholarship is very, very, you know, slim. And you have to kind of know that going in. My first Butler practice as a walk-on uh, was definitely interesting. Uh, my first impression of Steve when he showed up, um, you know, was he kind of reminded me of myself when I got here. Um, he was, you know, a little bit, you know, pudgy for where he needed to be. He didn't have the most confidence in himself on the court. You know, he had, he had come off a, a knee injury uh, in high school, so he was a little bit, um, you know, a little bit still bothered by that. But what we knew about him is he came from a great family of coaches. His dad's a tremendous coach, and uh, we knew he was a guy who could really shoot the ball and was going to be one of our hardest workers in practice. Um, he was somebody that you could tell wanted it, but um, and wanted to get better, but needed to you know, continue to work to get where he wanted to be. Uh, going from kind of like the main guy uh, on the high school team to literally being a nobody uh, on a team uh, sucked, to be honest. You know, from my injury and coming here, I definitely wasn't at the level these guys were. I had to improve a lot and uh, I, I had to learn a lot. I had to stay out of drills. Um, I didn't perform nearly as well as I wanted to. Um, kill my pride for a little bit, kill my confidence for a while and uh, it's something I definitely didn't enjoy. Steve, um, you know, he's progressed a lot. Um, at one point last year, you know, there are times in practice where you weren't sure if Steve was gonna score um, that day in practice, and now he's become, you know, one of the leaders of the um, you know, practice squad, getting us ready for the games. He's somebody who's scoring the ball at a higher rate. Uh, Steve is a very good shooter. That's that's why he's uh, playing here at Butler University. That's that's his skill that uh, got him to play Division One. He's either running in transition, getting his open shots, coming off screens, getting open shots, or uh, very good passers on our team will find him, and uh, he, he's hard to guard. He's finally getting back to full strength. He's about. 100% back. It's been three years and a couple months now, and he's a, a Division One athlete. He's turned himself into that through a lot of hard work, a lot of time in the weight room, a lot of time in the gym, and he is what they call a gym rat. He loves being in Hinkle by himself and shooting or with teammates, and uh, so he's getting better and better all of the time. It's really easy as a walk-on to get comfortable uh, in the position that you're in. It's, it's easy to get comfortable sitting on the bench. It's easy to get comfortable, uh, you know, cheering on your teammates. Uh, it's easy to get comfortable kind of laying back and not working, not trying to improve yourself because you just kind of accept your role. And uh, nobody thinks I can play because I don't play anymore. Nobody thinks I can even play the game of basketball that well. And so uh, I take that, I, I, I use that as my motivation because I have to keep it to fuel me or else uh, I'll become complacent and then, uh, won't ever make it.
Rams and all Rams. Um, you know, I get really excited when Steve gets to check in. Um, I think everybody on the team does. For him to uh, finally uh, get his moment to kind of shine and get out there and make a shot, uh, it's, it's so uplifting for my entire team as well as myself because uh, we see all the time that he puts in and you see all of us standing up on the bench whenever he takes a shot and how excited the, the fans get. Um, I think until earlier in this year he hadn't missed a shot. I know last year he didn't miss a shot in the game. Um, so we always are telling Steve to get as many shots up as he can. You know, we really ask, uh, look for him to, to play like he's practiced, and that's what uh, that's what he does. He doesn't play like a walk-on. He doesn't come in and think he has to shoot. Everybody wants him to shoot it because he's a great shooter. He's not into just getting in there and trying to score. If he's wide open, like when he when they play at Xavier, he makes two threes in a row. Score to three is good. Bennett for three again. But the next game, he's wide open there, yelling, shoot it, but he turns it down and gives a teammate a better shot. So, uh, you know, he, he is a good basketball player uh, in every sense of the word and just getting better all the time. And as a walk-on, I think that the key is when you go in there to look like you belong, and he does that. Now cuts in, jump pass out to Etherington. Bennett left corner for three. I can play the game of basketball. I'm a walk-on for a college team, but we're a, a really good basketball team. And um, I can play at this level. So it's kind of funny to me whenever people are like, oh, like, we saw you get in the game. We saw you hit that three. Like, that's crazy. I'm like, it's not, it's not that crazy uh, to me. You know, I come out and that's what I work for. I have the confidence when I go out there to make every shot I shoot. Uh, I have the confidence to be the best shooter out there when I'm there regardless of who's out there. But I use that in part for motivation, just because they're like, wow, like, you made a shot. And I'm like, yes, I did, like, thank you. A lot of walk-ons, you know, never really play impactful minutes. And I think that's probably the hardest part because as a competitor, you want to play impactful minutes. And there's a chance you may never do that. And it's very difficult, I know, at times for me and for Steve, you know, we've had conversations about how difficult it can be. There's some doubts that creep in sometimes, but I've never ever once thought about quitting. Uh, I've never ever once thought about leaving this team or thinking that I can't do it. If I thought I couldn't do it, I would have never came here. I came here 100% believing that I can do it, and I still 100% believe that I can play here at this level. You know, I take pride in uh, having the courage to follow a dream that I may fail at that people, you know, wouldn't necessarily do. Uh, I know I can play here. Uh, just It's just about getting opportunities. It's about performing. It's about working hard. And then if you get that opportunity, you take advantage of it. And so that's all on me. Uh, I'm grateful to be on this team. Winning, playing in Hinkle Fieldhouse, playing in the NCAA tournament is unbelievable. And that's, that's easily, you know, just, just being on this team is my favorite part. He's, he's a great teammate, a great friend. Um, he's younger than me, but I kind of look up to him in a lot of aspects. Um, he's a great role model, and he challenges me uh, each and every day. He comes in here, I mean, there hasn't been a day that I can remember that I haven't either seen Steve getting shots up on his own or getting extra work in on his own. And I think that's a testament to you know who he is as a player and who he is as a person. Uh, he's an everyday guy. I would call him an everyday guy because he uh, comes to work every day, uh, really embraces his role, and it's he's an invaluable part of what we're doing and an invaluable part of this year's success. In the next two years, I will have earned a scholarship. I will have played at this level. I will have helped this team win. I will have been successful as an individual at this level, and we will have been successful as a team at this level. I will have accomplished this goal coming back from this injury against all odds. I will have proved tons of people wrong. I will look them in the eye and say I did everything that you said I couldn't do, and I'm a firm believer that I can accomplish any goal I set my mind to.